Hey folks, I'm Dimitro, and if you are building AI agents or using any 10 tool, there is a one mistake that could quietly burn a hundreds of dollars every single day. And in this video, I'll show you exactly what it is and how to protect yourself in three minutes. So let's say I run travel agency and I've set up an Instagram account and I want people message us to, to get info about travel destinations, but no human involved. So I configured many chat, connected with NA10 and built an AI agent which will answer DMs. So it looks simple, right? But this one small webhook can be a, a financial time bomb. And let me show you what I mean. But first of all, let me introduce this system in a minute. So once someone sent a message to us, to this Instagram account, uh, ManyChat will trigger this webhook and webhook will run this whole system. So it will run AI agent, AI agent will generate a response and send it back to the webhook so that we will see this message in this chat. Before we continue, I'll show you how it works on practice. So I'll click here to executions and uh, let me try to send something. So I'll type here hi and I'll send it. So, yep, here you see the response and also you see one more entry in executions. So uh, it works perfectly, right? But here is the problem, this webhook actually uh, public. So if I click to the editor and double click to the webhook here under authentication, you will see none. So it means that there is no password, no tokens, no security, and anyone who have this URL can trigger our webhook. Let me show you how it's possible actually. So I just copy this URL and I have tool which called Postman and I just paste this URL here uh, before I've prepared uh, the message and uh, let me show you actually. So I click here to executions and I send a, send a message to the webhook to trigger it. So yes, you see the response, you see also a new entry here which means that we can easily trigger the webhook from the postman having only this URL and that's all. Uh, but also I can send multiple requests to the webhook from postman. I can uh, set up iterations here and I can send let's say five requests to the webhook. And uh, let me demonstrate you. So I start it and yes here you see entry and it will appear one by one actually. So here you are we have a uh, five requests. So let's imagine that uh, I can do not only five requests, but I can go here again and I can run it one million times. So what will happen if I do this? So as you already know, AI agents aren't free. And if someone find your webhook URL, it can abuse this URL and what you will have uh, actually. So uh, you already know that to work with this AI agent, you must connect it to the chat model and chat model actually consume tokens and tokens equals real money. So let's break down the numbers. Uh, here I'm using GPT 4.1 and it means that uh, for 1 million input tokens I spent $2 and for 1 million output tokens I spent $8. So let's do a simple math and calculate what happens if someone sent 1 million requests like this. First things first, let's understand how many tokens we will spend for one this message. And we have a tokenizer and uh, for input message, we will spend 172 tokens. It means that we will spend 172 million tokens if someone sent 1 million fake requests to us. And it means that we will spend 344 dollars only for input tokens for for the 1 million uh, fake requests but what about the output that ai generates for us so uh, in reality we do not know the how many tokens it will be but let's assume that this is something general yes so let me copy it and let's do it like this it's 32 tokens and 32 tokens uh, per 1 million fake requests, it's 32 millions. It means that we have 32 multiplied by eight and we have $600. Boom, that's, that's crazy, that's amazing. Uh, for 1 million requests, we will spend $600.
So as you already understand, that's insane. And now let's figure out how to fix this problem. Uh, so let's go back to the webhook and here we have authentication drop down and actually authentication will help us to protect the webhook uh, from uh, fake calls. If I click here, you will see a few options and let's go one by one here. Let's start from header authentication and I already created one. Let me delete it and Okay, so this is uh, the most simple security solution here. Uh, you just need to provide a name and a value and you must use it in your external system. So let me demonstrate. Uh, I set up this name xauth token and let me just put one here. One, okay. And yep, that's it. It's saved and we're good to go. Then let me sa save the entire setup and I reactivate it again. And now let's try to make a call from the postman. Okay, so authorization data is wrong. It means that we will not see a new entry under executions. And if I click it again, you still will not see it because we do not provide here uh, uh, the authentication token in the headers. So uh, let me try to add it. Okay, so after after we edit, it works perfectly. So this is a quite good solution for, let's say, if you are using uh, ManyChat, because ManyChat provide you option to add additional headers to the webhook calls. Uh, so this is this is the most easiest way to uh, provide uh, additional layer of security. But to make it even more secure than now, uh, let's follow best practices. So uh, the first one, never use simple value here like one or test or something like this. You should always create a complex value like test one, two, three, exclamation mark, uh, header, uh, or you know even even better uh, you can encode it using something like base 64 uh, i like this tool and this is the best solution for the headers to create something complex and then you can encode it easily uh, and uh, if you're having it like this it's the best uh, case for you also remember to not store it as is this is a terrible scenario when someone stored it in unprotected place uh, let's say if you have a custom code which trigger a webhook, do not store this value in your code. You always have something like .env file or some tool to protect these values. Beside that, it's good to remember to rotate these keys. Uh, let's say you have a window from 60 to 90 days to rotate these keys. It's actually the best practice if you're working with uh, authentication headers. Now let's talk about second option we have here and it's actually uh, basic authentication. And I also have something here, I will delete it. Yes, we don't need it. And basic authentication, it's when you set up user and password. This is almost the same as header authentication because uh, it's actually also appear in your header, but not all systems provide this option to authenticate. Let's say if you use ManyChat, you will not have this option. But if you are working with uh, uh, CRMs like HubSpot, you can easily implement it in this way. So let me just demonstrate it. I will put test here and test here. Uh, yes, I'll save it. And yep, we're good to go. Let me reactivate my setup. And let's make a call from Postman now. As you see, this call is rejected because we're still using a header authentication token, but for now we must use basic token. So let's go to authentication. I will choose uh, basic authentication and here I'll put test and test. Let me click to executions. 
And yes, now it's working and you see the result. Let's talk about third option uh, to protect your webhook. And this is actually JWT authentication or JSON Web Token authentication. And despite basic OS or header OS, uh, JWT is more complex and flexible tool uh, for authentication. Because if we're using basic or header, we always send the static content. Uh, for header, we have a a, just a line of symbols and for basic we have username and password which almost uh, always the same uh, but uh, what if we want to maintain uh, the external system with multiple users and uh, our goal is to provide access to the webhook for multiple users this is a very bad idea to share uh, with, with them some kind of a static content like a line or one single username or password for all your users. Uh, much better in this case is JWT authentication. So how it works, uh, first of all, uh, your user authenticate in your uh, external system using his username and password. And uh, then he receive a, a cryptographically signed uh, uh, like line of symbols then this line or we can call it token will be included in every single request and this token will contain information about the specific user uh, then the webhook will verify if this uh, token is valid uh, uh, with the jwt authentication let me show you so here i click jwt and then i select uh, to create new credentials. Here we have uh, two options. It's a passphrase or PEM key, but today we will use only passphrase. And here we need to specify only secret. So just for example, I will use, uh, I will use this website, which, which will help us to generate proper JWT token. And also I'll show you how we can put additional information in this token. So let's put here name, and name will be Dimitro. And let's put here role. Role is user. Uh, email like here role is already exist, but I'll delete this and this. And email would be Dimitro example.com. Okay, okay, that's all. And here we need to set up the key. And this key, this is actually for NA10, and we can choose here anything we want, something like this and this. Let's use some symbols, okay? And let's sign all of this information with this key. So I click here and I receive this line. This is actually our token. This is a token for our user we created with name Dimitro and with email Dimitro at example.com. So first of all, let me copy this one and let me, let me choose passphrase and I'll put it here and I'll just save it. Okay, that's cool. Let me save the result. Then I reactivate the flow. Okay, so let's try make a request with the postman. So for now we cannot do it, it's rejected because the token is not provided and it means that we need to set up uh, the, this token we received here to our request. And here I'll go to authentication and I'll choose not actually GVT bearer, but bearer token. This is totally fine. And I'll put it here and I'll send. Okay, so it's verified. It means that for now we have a response from our AI agent. But let me show you something additionally. So here in executions, I'll choose, I'll choose this, the last execution. And here in webhook, you can see that uh, not only token being provided here, but also I have additional information from uh, JWT payload. And it, it contain, contains my name, Dimitro, it contains role and email. In that case, we can scrape uh, this uh, data also and use it additionally in our system for some checks or uh, generate some additional content with this information. Okay, but what if another client uh, want to use this, uh, this way to uh, authenticate a webhook call? So let's go here and let's imagine that not Dimitro, but a guy with the name Bob uh, logged in to the system and Bob is admin. 
and let's generate a JWT token for Bob with the same key. Okay, we have it, that's cool. And then uh, let's open a postman and I'll paste new token here and I'll click send. So for now, let's see what we have uh, in our request. Okay, this is a new one. And under JWT payload, we have not Dimitra information right now, but Bob information with the name, role and email. Uh, that's how you can provide access for multiple users with the same uh, passphrase. And that's pretty cool if you would like to maintain a system for uh, multiple clients. So now you know how single exposed webhook can quietly drain hundreds of dollars from your AI project. And in this video, we covered three powerful ways to protect your webhook. It's a basic authentication, header authentication and JWT token. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with your friends.